it is absolutely fascinating to be able to see that you can go inside a cell, you can put damage precisely where you want, and you can watch proteins happening. Everything is made up of cells. Every living thing is made up of cells, plants, animals. And inside cells, there is DNA. Let's take this box as a representative of a cell. Take this as a representative DNA. And sometimes this DNA can get damaged by the food we eat, chemicals, radiation. When this breaks become serious, this can lead on to mutation. It can lead on to cancer. As you and I sit here, we have several DNA repair proteins that are looking around for damaged DNA to repair. So here we have a damaged DNA, and this protein comes along and says, oh dear, I must repair this. The question is, how does these proteins know what to repair, how to repair, and do they talk to each other? You can use DNA break to kill cells, radiotherapy for example, where we want to use the radiation to break the DNA and allow the cancer cells to die and then normal cells to live. The problem that us scientists have at the moment is radiation you cannot control, it goes everywhere. So what we've developed is a laser method which allows us to put the damage where we want inside the cell. We can cut precisely. Because these cells have been taken from either cancer patients or normal cells, we need to be able to grow them so we can use them in our experiments. So we need things like a sterile environment. These are cervical cancer cells, breast cancer cells, prostate cancer cells, and also some normal cells because we want to understand the difference between our cancer cells versus normal cells do the DNA repair. So now we take these cells to the lasers and then we can start to induce the DNA damage and look at the repair. So these are the actual machines that generate the lasers which we use for the radiation. So you can see in fact four different lasers on this table. This is several hundreds of thousand times more than your laser pointer. These lasers are what we call class 4, so these are very dangerous lasers. But at the moment we've set things up so that there's no laser coming out and all the lasers are perfectly safe. The lasers are actually reflected and then changed to be able to um, come into this microscope. So in fact this is where all the action happens. As you can see there are so many other proteins, so how can we see which proteins are involved? Here what we've done is actually tag our protein, say for example with a green color, we can now see, aha, this is the protein of interest. So how do we exactly watch this protein? Well, we excite the green color attached to the protein with another laser light. So this is a different laser light to the one we've used to cause the damage. Okay, so now we've got the sample on the microscope stage. We go over to this PC here we can excite the uh, sample, i.e. the cells, with different color lasers. So if I turn on the green laser now, what you can see is that uh, there's a, quite a lot of green everywhere, and indeed, this particular protein is everywhere. It's looking around for DNA damage, whether by chemicals or radiation, such as radon. So this protein is around all the time. And what we've done in just this one cell is to put a damage just there, the protein has accumulated. So all the proteins inside this particular cell is saying, oh, there's a damage. We better go and find out what it is and see whether we can repair it. So what you have is an intense area of activity. So this is uh, real time watching the DNA being damaged and being repaired. Whereas in the past, you'll have to do this outside in a different room in a radiation area, or if it's chemical, again, you have no control. But now we can control where we put the damage and watch how the DNA damage repair takes place. The technology we've developed here for doing DNA damage and repair does actually have uh, future impl implications. 
whereby we can use the laser to act or mimic ionizing radiation and be able to cause damage at the cellular level, which is really exciting. And for the future, yes, one can imagine such technology being translated to the clinics.